Hi everyone, John with Charles here, and we flew across the country to Boston, Massachusetts, and then headed out through some quaint New England towns to get, finally, to Brimfield, Massachusetts, where we are attending the Brimfield Antique Flea Market. Now this is the oldest outdoor antiques event. It's been going on for over 50 years, about a mile of Route 20 is just jam-packed with 19 different fields or venues, 21 shows, over 50,000 people are estimated to attend each year, and it certainly looked like it when we were out there. Uh, we started off the day at Dealer's Choice. Yeah, it was a bit, bit underwhelming. Uh, they stated they had uh, 400 vendors there. Um, but they did not have 400 vendors, but it was still worth going to because there was very nice people there. We found really cool stuff and actually brought some stuff with us from this particular place. Yes, and what we saw here, this was really, and they call themselves a flea market. It really is a flea market. And I said to you that this reminded me a lot of the French market in New Orleans. Just the way it's set up, the flea market, you see here's a whole bunch of vinyl, big set of vinyl. We saw some jewelry. Uh, you see a bunch of things uh, that people bring. They bring their trucks, they bring their cars, they, and they just, they bring a table and they just set up uh, in these open fields. We saw watches, we saw uh, these quilts here. So many things in so many different categories. So it's not just antiques, not just antiquities, it's not just vintage stuff. We also saw newer things like this. Yeah, this was a collection of Waterford uh, pieces that this guy had bought, and uh, we actually did take those with us. Yes, that was uh, Mr. James Keefe, and he was great to work with, and you'll be seeing his pieces in just a minute. This is another one of the fields that we headed over to. And you can see just how this, this is set up here. Uh, everywhere you see tents, and then you see everybody's different wares. Um, there's no master directory of what is where, so you just kind of have to go tent by tent looking in there to see what people have. It's an assortment of things, like look at these old vintage toys, um, and then all of these uh, kerosene lanterns. Mm -hmm. They had a very nice collection, especially like uh, pressed glass, cut crystal, I mean, you name it, these people had it. The canisters, uh, there was even a tent I went to where they had canisters, they had uh, spice tins. Yes, and here was a very pretty piece and we see some salt cellars here. It was just amazing to see all the different things because everywhere you look, it was somebody different and they were bringing their own wares to sell here. And it seems like just anybody can come and sell and, and rent out some space. Here's some Zippo lighters, and those are, are really popular right now, uh, going for 30 bucks. What I really loved about this is that it was so laid back. But I heard several times dealers actually saying, hey, you like something? Name a price, nobody's gonna get offended. And that's what it was about. And over at Grand Trunk, their field, we met a vendor from Drip Thrift. She had a nice collection of Dickens Villages here, which this I would definitely check those right, out. Studio 56. And here they had a fire hydrant. They had a lot of uh, different animal statues. Um, this guy had pretty much anything you could think of. Right. And this is the uh, Field Collins Apple Barn Antiques. And again, just another field full of tents with lots of vendors uh, with just selling all kinds of things, so every tent you went into was a surprise. Yeah, and it definitely was a surprise because some of the things I found in some of the tents, I was not expecting at all. Right, and you can see kind of how this is laid out. This looks a lot like Round Top. Uh, if you've seen our Round Top videos and we showed you the field part of the show, uh, this looks a lot like it. And this was, it had a lot of that same field, but also, um, it felt a little bit more relaxed here. A little bit, the, the attitude was, you know, more, uh, the people were trying to sell and they were ready to sell and ready to work with you on prices. So if you wanted to pick up things, you definitely could here. Yeah, that's one thing that I, I did experience with our first day. And here's an interesting set of uh, what I believe is crystal. We don't know who the manufacturer is. If anybody watching this knows, let us know in the comment. We couldn't identify this. Um, but it is an interesting pattern for sure. 
Here's another booth that was selling comic books, lots and lots of comic books, along with action figures. Again, if you're a collector of anything, you could probably find it here. This was an unopened crate of milk bottles. There was uh, over 150 bottles. Wow. And this is the Brimfield Barn, another one of the uh, venues there. And uh, we went inside of there. Not a huge venue, but as you can see, it is packed to the gills with things to look at and buy there. A uh, lot of fun. Another thing we noticed, people putting signs on themselves saying what it was that they collected. We had a great deal of fun today, and uh, now let's take a look at what we brought home. So we picked up one of these. That's a Billy Idol's Rebel Yell album in vinyl. It is, and the guy who was selling these, he was a serious collector, and he pretty much made every collection that he had, they were perfect condition. So the vinyls are wonderful. What did we pay for this? So with the discount, we paid $16. And what's it worth? Uh, I think it was about 25, 30 bucks. Okay. So. so this one came from the guy that had all the Waterford pieces. James uh, Keefe. Yes. And I want to say this is the Claire design. From Waterford? From Waterford. It is eight and a half inches tall. And he did a shore, and I did check them out. Every one of the pieces that we bought does not have any cracks, any chips, nothing. They are perfect. It's in great condition. This is Waterford. Mm -hmm. And do we know what design this is? I do not. I could not find anything on it other than just price. But we know it was Waterford because of the acid um, stamp on the bottom. Yes, every one of them does have an acid stamp on the bottom, which of course all Waterford pieces do, except some of the very first pieces that were made. No, this one's $45. Uh, the other one that we showed will come up as about 100 bucks. So these two pieces go together. Yeah, it says sugar and creamer. Um, I looked and I looked these up. They were about $70. And these are also Waterford. Mm-hmm. I did check for the edging. And of course, these are perfect condition. This is a Waterford toothpick holder. Do we know what design this is? I don't, and we have two pieces with the same design. No, three pieces, actually. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. So what would this piece be worth? Uh, 25 bucks. Nice, so nice. And it's small. Bad. It's small. Yeah, it is a very small piece. I mean, it is a little jam and honey jar. Another beautiful Waterford piece. I thought it was adorable. Uh, this one here, I did look it up, and uh, even with the missing serving spoon, um, it's about $70, but nice. it is just absolutely adorable. So another Waterford piece, and what is this? It is a pitcher. Um, I tried to find the design on it, I could, I could not, not find the name of the pattern. Um, but I did look it up. I found a few of them in the same pattern and it was going for about $100. Very nice, small picture. But I mean, the design, it's just kinda, it's just, it, it's a beautiful design. That is very pretty. This beautiful biscuit barrel. And this is a biscuit barrel, so you would normally put your uh, cookies. Cookies, um, people in England make the, these little uh, cookies that they cook, just called biscuits, and um, that would store them in there. Right. So how much would this water for piece go for? Um, so I looked it up, and this piece 
is 250. So this is a bar piece and it is a shaker and server. So you shake your drink up in it and then take the lid off and you pour your drink into a glass. And it's the same design as the biscuit barrel and the same design as the toothpick holder. Very nice. And how much would something like this fetch these days? $400. Wow. This is a Waterford decanter. This is a very interesting design here. A very intricate. I mean, I could only imagine how long it took them to make all these little bitty cuts here. It would have taken that cutter a very long time to do that design. Because with Waterford, this is all done by hand. Yes, and this is the old Waterford. I mean, Waterford now, you're not gonna get this type of quality with what Waterford does these days. Now this piece I looked up, I found a few of this particular design and it was going for $200. $200, very pretty. Now that is absolutely gorgeous. This is beautiful. Another Waterford piece, right? Yes. That is one of the older pieces from Waterford. And I mean, the way the light catches all those little prisms in there, I, it's just, that is a breathtaking piece. And what is this? That is a wine decanter. That is absolutely gorgeous. I can imagine it being filled with wine on a dinner table, and just all the sparkle and the, it would just look absolutely brilliant. Even as you're turning it there, you can just see that prismatic quality that Waterford has, or that any crustal has really, but this is just, it's absolutely beautiful. Now this piece, being an older piece and, and being as intricate as it is, what would this piece go for? This piece I found online from multiple people, $800. Wow. Wow, but you can look at the workmanship on that. You can see why it would be worth that much. So I did read up on this piece and one of the reasons why it's mo one of the higher desired pieces is one, it's one of the oldest pieces they made. Two, a lot of this was free-handed. It was wow. not a mold. That's amazing. And the main part that tells that it is free-handed is look at the shape of the spout. It is not perfect. It was all hand poured, hand pulled. It's not perfectly straight. So just think of how long it took that artist to free handedly cut. So here's one of the village pieces that we got from Drip Thrift. It is the Dickens series. And we absolutely fell in love with this piece and had to get it, especially since you can see the inside and you can see the Christmas tree and in the back there is a fireplace and on the wall there is a photograph. It has a lot of detail and is very pretty. So we spent $8 on it and just looked it up and it was a hundred bucks. And so this is our final haul today on our first day at Brimfield Flea Market where we spent $274 for everything you see here. And you calculated that the final replacement cost for all of this that you see here would be? $2,185. $2,185. What a haul, and this is so beautiful. And you know what's even more beautiful is that we are going to be opening our own online store at store.charlesandjohn.com. It's not up yet, but it will be soon and we'll let you know. And you'll be able to buy some of these pieces here and more from our own collection at great prices, well below what the replacement cost is. And we'll have those out to you on a first come, first serve basis once our store 
goes live. So we also are going to be here for two more days. So make sure that you stay tuned for that and see what we come up with on day two and three uh, here at Brimfield. Now, if you like that video, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you hit subscribe and turn on those notifications so you'll know when all of our new videos post. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll have more soon and see you next time. Thanks, guys.